Hey y'all, today we're gonna talk about tumbler seams and edges again, so stick around. Hey everybody and welcome, my name is Roy and today we're gonna talk about tumbler seams and edges. And this is not a video that I was planning on doing anytime soon because I've already done a separate video on seams as well as a separate video on edges. So I do encourage you to go back and look at those two videos. They hopefully will help you out. I'll leave a link in the description. Probably one of the biggest questions or concerns and challenges that people have that I've seen in the Facebook groups, very specifically our Facebook group, is about edges and seams. And a lot of people say they have challenge with ghosting. It's technically not called ghosting. The term ghosting is when you take an image that's really hot and move it just a little bit and the ink is not uh, finished releasing into a gas onto the substrate. And so it continues to release a little bit and you get a ghost looking additional image from the main image that you had. That's technically ghosting. So what we're talking about is not ghosting. It's just the image, the gas not adhering to the substrate. And we all know there are a lot of elements that go into making a good tumbler. You've got to have great time and temperature, or I guess not great. You've got to have accurate time and temperature, which would make it great. You have to have some resistance against the, or, or pressure onto uh, the tumbler to keep the paper somewhat tight against the tumbler, whether that be painter's tape or shrink wrap in an oven or the actual tumbler uh, heating element in a tumbler press. You have to have um, the right amount of pressure. You have to have good ink. You have to have good sublimation paper, which by the way, if you're wondering, I have a video also um, comparing several different sublimation papers. All, most of them came out quite well, actually. And then you have to have a good edge and a good seam, and that's what we're gonna talk about today. Some people are concerned that they're, they may not be using the correct ink, or they may not be using the correct paper. If you have a tumbler and the design comes out great, and I'll give you an example. I try to keep my uh, hands over that. If your color comes out great, it is probably not your ink or your sublimation paper. And it's probably not your time and temperature. It could have a little bit to do with your pressure, but probably not. I believe, at least from my experiences, is that it has a lot to do with how you put the paper onto the tumbler. And so we're gonna go over that today and a couple of the things that I do to um, not guarantee, but come really close to getting a, a great uh, edge and seam. So let's talk a little bit about this. I'm gonna use a matte tumbler today uh, because I like this uh, design. Uh, I think it'll look good on a matte. This particular design is, partly a cloth flag and is partly um, on uh, parchment paper, uh, an old paper. And so I think it'll look really good on a matte design. Anyway, what I always do when I'm wrapping a tumbler first is I put it straight side up like I'd be drinking it. I take my design and have it straight up. I actually learned this from uh, Tamara at RTS Sublimation Blanks. Blanks? Blinks? RTS Sublimation Blanks. And then, once I do this, I flip it over. And what I'll do then is make sure that both of the edges of the paper are flat against the tumbler. Now, what I will do before I do that is take a piece of tape and tape one side. Also, uh, on a side note, I leave about a sixteenth, between an eighth and a sixteenth uh, uh, piece of white paper on one side, and then the other three sides I trim up to the image. Now, I have this Pinch Perfect here. I love the Pinch Perfect. I did a video about it, and I do use it regularly. I'm not gonna use it today because some of you don't have it, and so I wanna be able to, uh, to show this to anyone, although I do highly recommend it. I'll leave a link in the description for 
the pinch perfect. Anyway, back to this. So the first thing I want to do is make sure that this paper is wrapped really well on the tumbler. I don't want to use the word pressure. I want to use the word tight. I want it to really cling to this paper. So the first thing is I got to make sure that the top, which is this, is, um, is going to come out perfect. So I make sure this paper is flat here. And then while it's flat, I'll take my fingers and I will push against the center. I'm not worried about the top. I'm not worried about the bottom. I'm worried about the center. And then what I'll do is I will take this and slide put that on there. So this center is tight isn't the word. Um, snug is a, is a good word. It's snug against the uh, the tumbler. Now, if my center is as good as it should be, the rest of this is just going to fall into place. So I don't have to pull real tight. Not only do I not have to pull tight, but I don't want to. And the reason is I don't want to buckle this up anywhere else and cause there to be a space that air can get into. I don't want to pull too much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tape this and here's how I tape my uh, my tumblers. I put one piece down the middle and then I put a piece here and a piece here and then a piece at the top and the bottom. And as I put that second piece in, I'll I'll I'm not pulling tight, but I'm I'm making sure it's just nice and flat, just nice and flat, because you want this paper to remain flat against the whole thing. But again, I don't want to do too much resistance because I don't want to create uh, any, any kink. Again, it sounds like this, I'm doing it tight. I'm not really doing it that tight. Another great reason to tape this way is when I go to take this off, I'll take off the top, I'll take off the bottom, and then I just pull this piece right here and it opens up both of these. I pull hot, hot. Uh, because I think it comes off easier. And then this last piece I put on the bottom. I'm still going to make sure, even though it's a small, small amount, that that's snug against each other. And then what I do is I have this overlap. And the reason I have this overlap is because I usually do my, almost always do my tumblers in the press. And by having this, I can see where I am as I'm turning it because I do four rotations. A lot of people don't do that. It's what I've found to be best. And here's something else. Speaking of what I found to be best, there are some people that can use two or three pieces of tape and have excellent results. I am not one of those people. So here's what we've got. Now I'm going to tape the top and I'm going to tape the bottom. So I will get my first piece of, paper, of tape and I'm going to put it where it is just over the edge. I don't know if you can see that, um, but it is just, let's see, let's see, let me see if we see that. Can you see that? Just over the, the edge. And what I will do is I will then tape this around and I'm not pulling tight. I'm just laying this on here. Now I'm going to take my, fingers and I'm just going to roll that little bit of tape over it. And I'm going to make sure this is where I have pressure. So that tape, that the paper is firm against the entire uh, tumbler and any little areas that look like they've got I don't know if you can see that, that, uh, that have a little teeny bit of a, a, a kink in them. I will use my thumb and I will get those little kinks out. This is actually more than I normally have, but that's okay. Okay. Now, for me, this is the more important part. I take another piece of tape. This one I straddle. And I put half the tape on the tumbler and the other half of the tape over the table. This one I'm pulling tight. And what I'm basically doing is I am pushing down 
all those little teeny areas that may not have been uh, pushed down as well as I could have with my, um, with my fingers. So top is done. I'm not worried about that. It looks like it's going to be pretty good. That is the top and not the seam. We'll get to the seam in just a second. And now we're going to do the same with the bottom. Bottom tends to cause more problems. So now I'm going to take the second piece. And again, I'm not pulling tight. I'm laying it on there. Right now I'm going to push tight up the tumbler to the bottom. And then I'm going to let that tape lay at the bottom. I don't know if you can see, but I'm going to push that. And and I'm going to have a few little kinks in it. That's okay. But what I'm doing, and I, as I'm, I'm <laughs> easy for me to say. What I'm doing now is I am flattening the bottom of this paper. Now you can see there are some spots where that paper is kinked up a little bit. So the first thing that I want to do is go through with my finger and push those little kinks out as much as possible. I think I have pushed most of these little kinks out as good as I can. There's still a couple of them. But the trick is you're trying to flatten this paper. Those little areas where it bunched up when it was going around the curve, you're trying to flatten those. I use my thumb because it's always attached to my hand. And once I get that done, this is where that second piece of tape is really important. So I'll take the second piece of tape. And then this piece I'm going to set again half on the tumbler and half off. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull tight. And what I'm doing is I'm trying those little edges of the tumbler that I couldn't get before. I'm trying to get this tape to push it down for me. And then sometimes it will work on all of them. Sometimes there's still a little teeny bit that I have to push to try to get out. So that's it for the top and the bottom. Hopefully they will come out okay. Another thing you can do, which by the way, this is here because I, um, I just, it's a dry cotton uh, towel. Um, I use it to, to uh, clean off my tumbler before I put an image on it. Another thing you can do is, is take a piece of cloth like this and just push this to get that paper laying flat. If I do this, I usually do this before the second piece of tape. I just forgot to show you all. So that is going to be pretty darn close. All right. Now the seam. There are two seams on this tumbler. There's one on this side and one on this side. There's two. And the one that we typically pay attention to most is that one that is overlapped, which in the way that I um, taped it is this this one right here. So I take my thumb because again, I always have it and I put it along that edge and I push down and I do that a couple of times. That's the second most important seam. The most important is this one that's underneath. So I want to go back and I want to do the same thing with that one that's underneath and make sure that I am pushing really, really hard to get that seam tight against the substrate. So you want to do that a couple of times. You can use your thumb. Some people use little sharp tools. I bought something on the recommendation of someone from the Facebook group and I just haven't used it yet. I think it worked great, but again, I always have my thumb. Okay. So that is just about it. But let me tell you where you have your issues with your seams. If your regular seam, the main, if the main part of your seam is good, your issues often are at the very top right here. Sometimes the bottom for me, I found the top. So as you are 
pushing with your thumb, you really want to make sure you get that both of the seams of that top right there. Push all the way down and get that bottom right there. Same thing here, more important seam. Push it and get that top. And that hopefully is wrapped well. Let's go bake it and see what we come up with. So this has just come out of the press. I'm gonna show you how I uh, take the uh, paper off and I do do it hot. The first thing I do, this is probably mostly habit, is I pull out the top of this and then I grab it and I pull it. Now it's been out for about a minute to get to the recording. So it came out a little bit more difficult than, than normal, but that usually pops right off. Then I go to the bottom and I take my um, fingernail, which I, I let this one grow a little bit longer. And I peel this. And again, it's been sitting for about a minute. Normally it is really fast to uh, really easy to, to get off. Okay, I get the bottom off. And then I'm gonna try to show you here. What I do is I take this edge of this and I peel it back and it pops both of those off. And then I can pull this off and I can, hot, I can pull this one back. And then I usually let it sit for about a minute and a half before I take the paper off. The reason I let it sit is if I tried to pull it and it were really hot, it's probably, it's past being too hot now, but if I did, if I did try to pull it uh, out when it was too hot, that's when I get ghosting, or that's when I could get ghosting. So this, we're gonna wait just a moment here and then cross our fingers that the seams and the edges are looking good. While we're waiting for this to cool down just a little bit, um, don't forget, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Um, think about subscribing to the channel, click the notification bell so when a new video comes out, you'll be the first to know about it. And then also join our Facebook group. We got some really great smart people in there that help out a lot and a lot of great questions uh, that, um, that I'm learning from as well. I'll leave a description for the Facebook group, Industrial Fringe Facebook group, in the description as well. And then um, a, lot of the, uh, a lot of the tools that I use, I'll leave a link uh, for, for those as well. So you can get those if you want. But I think this is gonna be close to being done. Still hot, but it's manageable. Okay, so let's, uh, looking pretty good. Let's peel this off and It is looking fantastic, actually. I, I couldn't even tell which side was the seam. It's a pretty good edge, don't you think? And the bottom is the one that I um, have in the past had a little bit more uh, trouble with. But that came out really good. Uh, which one's the seam? Is this the seam? I don't know. One of the, I can't tell which one's the seam. So I created this file. It's the official Camp Lejeune drinking water, and it was bottled between 1953 and 1987. Oh, I have some digital designs that I sell. I'll leave a link in the description for those, including this one, um, for those as well. Definitely check those out. Um, but uh, this came out fantastic. And I do usually, when I create uh, designs, I'll create them in such a way that there's a way to hide the seam. And in this case, I put uh, that there is a, oh, hang on. Sorry, there is a little, I don't know if you can see it, right right here a little bit of paper residue that's okay 
that is okay. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take a damp cloth. This isn't the same one that I used to clean it. I like a dry one for that. But literally we will just go and wipe that right off. And it will look good. So that is, dry it off a little bit, our finished file. And again, I think for seams, whenever you can, it's important to have a design that will help um, each side connect better. You can't take a, a picture, and I think I mentioned this in the, in the video just about seams, you can't take a picture uh, this got a, a lake on one side of the design and a tree on the other side and wrap them around and expect them to connect. It's not going to happen. So when you're looking for designs, if you're looking for you want really good seams, make sure you've got a design that will, um, that will uh, help you with that. So for the, the tops and the bottoms, wrap them. Again, some people don't have to wrap them at all. Um, some people don't tape the, tape the top or bottom, and I applaud them for that. I can't do it. However, my results um, are good, so it's worth it for me to do that extra uh, uh, taping. So there you have it. Sides, tops, bottoms, seams. Practice makes perfect, and make sure that paper is tight against the substrate, in this case the tumbler, and make sure that stuff is taped down to where it is tight so you won't get any ghosting. Anyway, that just about does it for today. Again, um, please subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell, and I hope to see you again real soon. Have a great day. Hey y'all, today we're gonna talk about Another great way, another, <laughs> and I hope to see you again real soon. Have a great day. Why do I always want to do this with this? <laughs> you should buy a Pinch Perfect just to play around, just, just to play around with it.